here with Dick White, um, ex-dean of the Faculty of Education at Monash University, but also a science educator of, of a lot of note. But more importantly, Dick, a life member of ACERA. And mm -hmm. so it's going to be great to hear from you because you've got the ACERA history locked in your head and you're going to tell us about some of it. Of course, history is very personal. You know, my view of it mightn't be what everybody else remembers, but what you probably don't appreciate is how primitive things were early on. Um, 1970, Peter Fensham had um, been Professor of Science Education, first in the country uh, for a couple of years. And he had this idea that it'd be good to find out what everybody was doing in science education research around the country. So he sent out letters, or to be honest, he got me to send out letters <laughs> for him. Um, to like various it. people yes. and we got people to come and we met downstairs in this building. Right. I remember we sat in a circle, so probably about 25 of us I think, something like that. Mm -hmm. And nobody in Australia at that time had done a PhD in science education. Oh really? Nobody, not a soul. Um, Dick Tisher was well on with one, but he was doing that uh, enrolled in an American university. Right. Uh, most of us were sort of thinking about or doing masters or PhD, but nobody had finished one. Anyway, Peter had us all to go on. We thought uh, we all said what we hoped to do, <laughs> and we thought it'd be a good idea to meet again in twelve months' time, see how we'd got on. Um, so we had the first ACERA conference in 1971, mm -hmm. which Dick Tisher organised in Queensland. And a dozen or so of us presented papers on our research. Peter Fincher wasn't there. <laughs> of course, he was overseas. I was going to say, he was overseas. <laughs> <laughs> which was a pity in one way, but in another way, I think it was a good thing, was that we all then realised you know, we had to stand on our own feet. Mm. And what ACERA did was provide a, a pedestal for you to stand on your own feet. Yeah. Um, and we made a number of good decisions in principle at the time. Probably the most important one was that at ACERA, there would be no negative criticisms mm -hmm. of people's work. There'd be comment, but it had to be constructive. Right. Yep. And we, we all agreed to that. And if anybody looked like stepping out of line, it was enforced. Yes. And I think that was crucial because it gave me and everybody else, I think, confidence. Mm -hmm. And you do need confidence, confidence in research. I'd seen it later, I saw in other uh, organisations, in other countries, how destructive criticism mm. would just stop people going on with their work. Yeah. And ACERA was always supportive, always positive. So from your perspective now, at your end of the, your um, career, uh, what would be in it for a new member for ACERA, do you think? Mm. Use it to I mean, use it in a selfish way. Use it to learn, um, to learn lots of things, like what it means to be a researcher, mm -hmm. how to write about your research, how to present your research, um, not only in written form but in oral yeah. form. But use it to make connections, meet people, mm. talk to people. Don't go to ACERA and sort of sit in a corner and, and not talk with people. Even the most famous person be delighted to talk with you. Yes, that's right. They like to, they like to know that somebody wants to talk to them. Exactly. That's right. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah.
Be busy. Be busy. <laughs> okay. Dick, look, thanks very much for your time uh, today uh, and giving us your insights into not only ASIRA in terms of its history and its mm. origins, but also in terms of its personal connections to you. So thanks very much. Been a pleasure. <laughs>